says, an end is come, the end is come, it watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to invite the speaker so that he may share with us all that the Lord has given unto him. Who with me will welcome the speaker? All the time. God is good and that is the nature. Wow. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes. Let us believe and pray before we start. Our dear Heavenly Father, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. The hours come, glorify thy Son, so that thy Son may glorify thee. In this I mean, Lord, give me your Holy Spirit, so that I can glorify you by preaching the truth as it is in Jesus. Lord, encompass us by your angels, surround us and wash us by thy blood, so that we can understand the precious, the precious word for us in this time. We are told in Ezekiel 7, 6, that the world is coming to an end. Are we ready? That is a question. Help us, O oh Lord, take us through as the main facilitator. Use me as a vessel, O Lord. Hide me behind the cross. Let you be loved, be cherished, be embraced, be worshipped, be felt, and be loved. Please, I do pray just in believing through Jesus' holy name. Amen. So, my name is David Jatea Mofat. Uh, my name is David Jatea Mofat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm from Nairobi County Currency and I was invited to be under shepherd of Christ, amen? Amen. Christ is the main shepherd here, amen? Amen. Yeah? You see, the same way you cannot use an angel to preach to us or to save us, that's why Christ must use one of us. Even in the, in the terms of salvation, he needed to be one of us. In terms of preaching, he uses one of us. So, the title for this week is preparation for the final crisis. I know we have faithful teachers who have been taking us to do the word of prophecies, the sanctuary, Christ our righteousness. And they really showed, they have been telling us or showing us that we are at the verge of eternity. Okay? Jesus is coming soon. Now, that will be our theme uh, for the entire Wait, now look at this. If the theme is preparation for the final crisis, if that is the theme, I won't repeat, uh, is this kind of music? Then it means there's a kind of prophetic message. Prophetic message. Okay? Bestowed upon us. And we must look for its sanctifying influence to come upon our work, upon the workers. That those for whom they labor may know that they have been with Jesus and have learned of him. We need spiritual eyesight. We need spiritual eyesight. The church of Rhodesia is blind, but not, not totally blind, and to some extent it's blind. We need a spiritual eyesight that we may see the designs of the enemy. And a faithful watchman, watchman who will claim the danger. We need power from above that we may understand, as far as the human mind can, the great themes of Christianity and their far-reaching principles. Those who are under the influence of the Spirit of God, listen to this, will not be fanatical, will not be fanatical, but calm, mm -hmm, steadfast, mm -hmm, free from extravagance in thoughts. Free from extravagance in thought, word, and deed. Amid the confusion of the lucid doctrines, the Spirit of God will be a guide and a shield to those who, will, who have not resisted the evidences of truth, silencing every other voice but that, but that which comes from him who is true. Amen? Amen? We need the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Otherwise, you will end up being fanatical. Somebody who is studying the Bible without the Holy Spirit is always arrogant and pride. Spiritual pride. Eh? 
We need to study for the word of God led by the Holy Spirit. In meekness, holiness, steady fast. Present the truth as it is in Jesus. Live the results in Christ. Amen? Amen. So that we can understand the great controversy. Our war is between us and the enemy of righteousness. The message and the messenger. Let us pray. Our oh, dearly Father, indeed, I have nothing to tell your children. I'm just a mortal being with sinful nature, thoughts that are corrupted by the things of this world. Purify me, Lord. I took a journey through a vehicle that was blasting in music, bursting with the music. Lord, every word there almost interfered with my thought process. Purify me by your spirit. Sanctify me. Give me meekness and loneliness. Bring everything to remembrance and speak to thy people at thus says you. Lord, please fill me with your wisdom. Give me your spirit. Please I do pray just and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Okay. So uh, now I will ask questions. This is a class. This is not a sermon. Uh, for us to be prepared for the imminent second coming of Jesus, we need a revival and reformation. Don't go to the next uh, slide, okay? But do you have uh, something that I can control on for myself? Uh, wireless mouse. Okay. So um, we need a revival and reformation of primitive godliness. Uh, today, I will also spend my time to show you prophetic timelines a bit for us to see and I mentioned some things that will make us to understand why we need a revival of primitive godliness like never before. Amen? Amen. Now, let me ask a question. What do you think it's revival? What's revival? What's revival? This is a study. This is a study. What's a revival? What is revival when somebody says, I'm revived? You are so okay. I'm revived when you say I'm revived. What's the revival? I will point out. I know your name, sir. Huh? Yes, we Thank you. That is a correct answer. Now, what's the information? What's the information? Because there are two different things. Yes, my brother. Uh, an information, mm -hmm. that's a the the change. Yes. The, what on your app, the Lamesema, you get a fully, you're working a power to work. Someone they call Kuba, Joby Tongazeka. So you take it to Gazeka, for example, and you take it to Kokidogo, who is a warm night, and he can call me with a big night. So information is the outward change you can see. Any the results which you can see after the the Bible? The function results are not from the Bible. Thank you so much. I love the way these guys are using common examples to make us understand. You remember Christ of the Vessel? Christ of the Vessel means common examples that Christ used. So if it was the time of Christ, I could say, Tito, object lessons. <laughs> so he's using very good examples for us to understand. Amen? So uh, that, that, whatever they are saying is true. Uh, even from a dictionary, uh, whatever it says is true. But now we are not here for dictionaries, amen? Amen. 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 We are here to hear a thus says the Lord. Now, let us revive. Then I will show you the agents through which we can get revival. But before we do that, I will tell us about the prophetic event that will tell us that we need a spiritual revival and reformation. Next slide. Now look at this. 
A revival of true holiness among us is the greatest and the most urgent of all our needs. Question. Do you need a husband that's great and spinning? <laughs> yes or no? Mm -hmm. Simple question. Hey. <laughs> According to quotation, what is our greatest need? Not education, not a wife, a husband, not a job, not a degree, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. But I speak with boldness. <laughs> How do we approach the throne of grace if we don't have boldness? Now, uh, is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. To seek this, now look at this, should be our first work. So when you wake up in the morning, what should be your first work? To make the bed? To make the bed. <laughs> the first work should be revival and information. Amen? Amen? So you pray first before you make a bed. Amen? Yeah. Are we together? You may argue about that. I'm not here for the <laughs> There must be honest efforts. What? Honest effort to obtain the blessing of the Lord. So honest means. Working your own salvation with fear and trembling, okay? Yeah. Giving yourself, even if the circumstances are limiting around. Are we together? Yeah. Even if there are many temptations around you, or the duties of this world are so pressing you that you cannot get enough time to spend with Jesus. Amen? Amen. So it should be our first work with greatest efforts. Amen? Amen? Are we together? Yeah. Now look at this. Ha. To obtain the blessing of the Lord. Not because God is not willing to bestow his blessing upon us, but because we are unprepared to receive it. Amen? Amen. So God is willing to do it for us. But because we are not prepared, that's why he's lingering. Let me use that word, lingering. Eh? Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Now, next slide. Oh, you got it. Now, let me enjoy this gadget. <coughs> Uh -huh. uh, okay. <laughs> Next slide it says uh, volume one selected the messages page 128 paragraph one. Now what is revival according to what the brother has said a very correct answer, a very correct answer. But I know they said that because they have read from the Bible and spirit of prophecy, but using just simple examples so that everyone can understand. Amen. Amen. Now a revival and a reformation must take place under the administration of the Holy. Spirit. Under the administration of the Holy Spirit. You remember the verse I, uh, the I read? Under the administration of the Holy Spirit. So there can be a revival and a reformation without the Holy Spirit. True or false? True. True. What? Self-righteousness. And we saw the one that is due to Holy Spirit, you become steadfast, meek, to duty, honest, piety, sanctity. Okay? Yeah. But the other one is true. Hatred, mm -hmm. ignorance, uh, show off, Comparison, comparing yourself with others in the terms of reformation, in terms of reformation and revival. Okay? Now it says revival. Okay, revival and reformation are two different things. True. Revival signifies uh, it doesn't have a, a red uh, point. Okay. Revival signifies a renewal of spiritual life. Renewal. Okay? A quickening of the powers of mind and the heart. A resurrection from spiritual death. And it's a direction from spiritual death. So it is what? Signifies a renewal of spiritual life. Meaning that you were spiritual at the beginning, but you got a point whereby you died, you backslidden in a way. Isn't it? But now there's a, a renewal. A quickening of the powers of the mind and heart. Question. How is the mind and the heart quickened? Answer. By what? Is there a scripture? So a scripture. Let us go to John chapter 6, verse 63. John 16, chapter 6, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse, verse 63. 63. Somebody. Scripture says, it, says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, uh -huh. the flesh profiteth nothing. Uh -huh. The words that I speak unto you, they are, they are spirit and they are life. So the word I speak you, to you are the spirit and are life. Not is filled with the spirit or it just life. No. The Bible is clear for my friends. The words that I speak to you are spirit and are life. life. So for us to be quickened if with spiritual life, we need that life. We need that spirit. We need the word. Amen? Amen. 
The word of God is a living word. Okay? Are we together? Yes. Yeah. So the word of God will quicken the powers of the mind. And I remember another verse. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 3. To verse 3, what does it say? In fact, to verse 2. What does it say? Romans 12, verse 1. To 2. I hope you are getting these verses. Uh -huh. it, says, it says, I beseech you therefore, uh -huh. brethren, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh -huh. Continue. And be not conformed to this world, but, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But be ye transformed by the renewing of what? Of your mind. Uh -huh. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect to God. Now what is that the news or transforms? The word, the spirit, which is the life of God. Amen? Amen. Are we together? Amen. By the way, we will see the life of God is in this word. Are we together? Those are not my words. I'm going to quote. You see, the, the good thing about studies, if you quote, without contradiction, without symbolism. Okay? We are going to read here. So, that's why we are studying about the message and the messenger. We, sh we will see the power of the word of God and its importance. Now, it's going to say, information signifies a reorganization, a change in ideas and the theories, habits and the pra practices. Ah, so, oh, I'm revived by the word of God. The word of God has shown me this is wrong. It has exerted force in my mind. In that because of the love of Jesus, which has been preached unto me and I've seen it clearly, and because I've loved, loved him back, I've allowed the Holy Spirit to work in me to wash my thoughts, to cleanse my thoughts, to purify me. Now the best thing that follows, the next thing that follows that revival is reformation. What is reformation? I used to say this, Lord, I change through your name, through your power. I used to dress this way. I used to advance this way. I used to say this way, to think this way. I used to eat this way. I used to treat your message this way. I used to treat others this way. I used to spend my money this way. I used to, 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 to hate people, eat and see. Now, that is the organization, changing ideas, practices, and what? And, and, what? Ha and habits and practices. I see one thing there. Do you know that reformation is purely on human effort? Two of us. But the revival is purely on Christ, divinity. Amen? Amen? So what do I see? A union between divinity and humanity Amen. for you to overcome sin. Amen? Amen. Amen? So anyone who says Jesus will come and uh, uh, you are lying yourself. You are fooling yourself. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> so the information is left upon you to act in relationship with what Jesus has shown you. Amen? Amen. And most of us are ignorant. Are dormant. The crisis is coming. Now, revival and reformation are to do their appointed work. And in doing this work, they must blend. What is blending? I'm blending juice. What is blending? I'm blending some metals. Union. Union, isn't it? Somebody who has received the true revival of primitive godliness is a reformer. Of course, it may be step by step growth in Christ. What does it mean? I don't, I don't, I don't want to say you will take ten days, ten years to reform. No, God does not work that way. That is evolution. <laughs> evolution changes with the time. Okay? When God says, "Be of good cheer," you are healed. Hey, my brother, you are the one. <laughs> you are healed. At that moment, you become good, isn't it? Yeah. Sin no more. What is that? Sin no more. Spiritual wise, Christ has done his part. But sin no more. You, humanity, you must cooperate with the divinity every time. By the way, we will see how we should maintain and how we can maintain that relationship with Jesus at every step. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are here for a task, says the Lord. Throughout the week, we have been receiving good advices. But here we are for good news. Amen? Amen. No time for good advices. Now, uh, thank you. Pause there, pause there, my priest. Uh, pause there, pause there. Let us go to Psalms chapter 119. Psalms chapter 119. And say something brief. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. 
Gather after this session, you will never neglect this book. You see this book? We love it. It will become sweet to your taste buds. Amen? Amen. You, will leave, you will feel hungry if you don't partake it. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, Psalms 119, verse 105. What does it say? It says, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. And a light unto my path. First things first. First things first. That is just greeting hands. Eh? Let, us, let us hear of the matter. 133 now. 133. Verse 133. Order my steps in thy word. Order my steps in thy word. And Lord, and, no, and let not my iniquity. And do what? Let not my iniquity. any iniquity huh? have dominion over, over me. me. Ah, guide my steps in your word. Thy word is a lamb unto my and a light unto my path. Mm. So with the word of God, there is no stumbling. Hmm? There is no trembling. There is no trembling or staggering. Okay, there is no staggering, isn't it? Because you are walking, walking in the sure path that leads to eternity. Proverbs 14 verse 12, it says that there is a way that seemeth right in the hand of a man, but the end of it leadeth to death. death. So if you reject the word of God that bring revival, that bring revival, reformation, that bring revival, that is transformation, renew of mind, then it means you want to walk in your way, which will comfort yourself. Say that I will be in heaven, I attend church, I give tithe, I dress well, I do everything, I don't have any issue with anybody, and I will be in heaven. Yet, in everything that you are doing, the word of God is contrary to your things, okay? It's contrary to your things, or you are contrary to God's word, which is sweeter. <laughs> you are contrary, isn't it? Are we together? Now, verse 11, what does it say? Verse 11 of the same book, by the way, Psalms 119 is the longest chapter that speaks about the word of God. The doctrine, the word of God, and the law of God. Amen? Amen. Now read it. Verse 9, mm -hmm. verse 11. Uh -huh. Verse 11. Verse 11. Uh -huh. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Which, what is the heart? According to the Bible perspective. The mind. the mind. So when you hide the word of God in the mind. Finish, preacher. That I might not sin uh -huh. against thee. So when you hide the word of God in the mind, you cannot sin against who? The most high. Question, how can you hide the word of God in your mind? Answer, how can you hide the word of God in your mind? By reading it and printing it in the memory, where the enemy cannot snatch it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> the recorded it, the written word may be snatched, may be burned, may be destroyed. You may be restricted from its reading. But when it's printed in the memory, when you develop a word of scriptures, it cannot snatch it from there. Amen? Amen. 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 What a powerful God we have. Now look at this. Agents of revival. We are coming back shortly. What are, to that, uh, whatever you are saying, agents of revival, my friends. Agents of revival. Agents of revival. Ah, agents of revival. Number one, most important, the word of God. The word of God. The word of God is the agent number one for revival. When you neglect it, you cannot benefit from the blessing of the heaven. Now, number two, the law of God. The law of God. Mm. You see, the law of God, the word of God, salvation is in them, isn't it? That is our righteousness, okay? That's why we are not we are delighted with them. Number three, number three, mark this. Very important. By the way, this week will be sweet. Because Christ is the facilitator, amen? amen? I'm also listening to him, amen? amen? Now, number three, the help message. You will be surprised. You will be surprised. I will quote for you, even from the Bible. Help messages are part for you to grow, to understand the word of God, for you to have a clear, prayerful life, for you to overcome the appetite, even self-control in sexual sensualities, amen? amen? You will see, just wait, the help message. The help message. The message to the Hellenite, amen? In 1860, the church was given that message. Very beautiful message. Ah, the last one, the word of prophecy. Brings the revival of primitive what? Godliness. The word of prophecy. The word 
of prophecy. The word of prophecy. Let me look at my clock. Mm, we are told that he knows, but he has a short time. Eh? <laughs> so, if Satan knows, what, what about me? Who am I? I should know that I have a short time. Agents of revival, the word of God, the Lord of God, the heart message, the word of prophecy. Now, somebody is asking, hey, servant, what about prayer to life? Do you know that you cannot know how to pray if you don't study the word of God? Most of your prayers are not being answered because you don't know how to pray. Christ cannot go against his will. His will is in the word. So you cannot go against his will to answer your prayer which are contrary to his will. Preacher, is that scriptural? Yes. Psalms 38 verse 2. Let us go there. Uh, Psalms 38 verse 2. Let us go there. Psalms 38 verse 2. Are we there? Ah, somebody read it. Psalms 38 verse 2. Say. I will worship towards thy holy temple uh -huh. and praise thy name for thy loving kindness uh -huh. and for thy truth. Uh -huh. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So God has magnified his word above his name. So if he, if he has magnified his word above his own name, what is his God's name? Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. See you? Jehovah Yahweh. Okay? Another part of the name of God is the character of God. True. But how does the character of God, how do we acquire it? Through the word. First of all, we must understand the word. The word to transform us. Because the word is spirit, then the word to help us to possess the fruit. That the fruit of the Holy Spirit is the character of God, the name of God. Amen? Amen. You see, they cannot start with the name, then it's the, the word, isn't it? Okay? You cannot also understand God and his names, Jehovah's, Jehovah's Jireh, without studying the word. Amen? Amen? He has exalted his word above his name. Amen? Amen. So, his will is based on the word. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Are we together? Are we together? Yes. So a prayer, even if you become a prayerful person, by the way, it starts to Christ, page 11, paragraph 1 says, those who will continue in prayer, neglecting the study of the word and witnessing, they will soon cease to pray. Amen? Amen? Now, all these things, now, all these things, all these things should be done prayerfully. Amen? Prayer. Which quote is that? <coughs> somebody, somebody learn to deserve pages. It's not in the slide, I think. It's not in the slide. Let us go to deserve pages. Deserve pages 459. Let us save time also. Uh -huh. Hurry up. At the exact uh, time I will be finished. Uh -huh. Prayerfully. Deserve pages. 459 paragraph 1 the last sentence from the full stop the last sentence the last sentence mm -hmm. whoever will prayerfully study the bible sister raise your voice oh. yes <laughs> uh -huh. whoever will prayerfully study the bible whoever whoever yeah you would attack a terrorist whoever mm. even if it's an al-qaeda Study the Bible prayerfully. Continue. Desiring to know the truth. Not just studying the word prayerfully, but desiring to know the truth. So what do we need for us to understand the Bible? Contrite heart. Penitence. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Imagine every morning before the noise of vehicles and the neighbors and the music from Hufas, eh? you listen to the sweet voice of the Lord from heavenly chambers, then you respond back to your prayer. How sweet is that moment? Mm -hmm. Then when the church at six, the birds are also up, praising their father, because they laid their substance in sleep in the evening. In the morning, they were cold. Amen? Amen. Are we together? Mm -hmm. uh, now, Marisa. Okay. Uh -huh. That he may obey it, mm -hmm. will receive so, divine enlightenment. If you study the word of God so that you can obey, you will receive the divine enlightenment in all aspects, every teaching, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't study. Uh, by the way, when I was in my second year, it reached a point where I studied the Bible in order to, to argue. You know the meaning of argue? Mm -hmm. hmm? You know the meaning of argue? Yes. 
listen to you preaching what I don't believe, then I go and study perpendicular, orthogonal. <laughs> <laughs> I come with spiritual stamina, then I say, but I'm on, let us see. <laughs> a basket of quotations and verses. <laughs> and I believe you, I, I believe me, that you'd go home wounded. <laughs> <laughs> but that is not the way we should study the Bible. Even if we, we must debate about the word, not even debating, discuss, having a discussion about our differences, it should be peaceful, lovely, with the contract hearts. Amen? Mm -hmm. With the spirit, some even more than us. A man, some a man's end. The spirit of prophecy says, an argument won is a spirit, a soul lost. And the Holy Spirit is not in any, other, any argument. Two of us. True. The scripture says, uh, the spirit of prophecy. Now that is the secret. That is the secret. Now, let us look at the word of God briefly. What is the word of God? People don't understand. What is the word of God, by the way? That's, uh, that's a question. What do you think is the word of God? The Bible is a compilation of different books. So what is the word of God itself? Christ. Hmm? Christ. 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 And one said Christ, one said also the written word. Because, yes, okay. yeah, because. because you see, uh, the, light, the word of God, the words that God used to speak to the prophets are written in his word. But in literal sense, the word of God is actually Christ himself because he's like the he's like as a speech is to the is as a speech is to the is to the thought, mm -hmm. so is Christ. That's a big study. Okay? Mm -hmm. That man has sunk deep and sharp to obtain the hope of truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. My brother Tito, you raised your hand up. Christ, according to you, Christ, eh? the yes. same one I mean. But now, uh, I will, okay, Christ is the living word, but the written word is this printed volume. Eh? Mm -hmm. But now, what is the word of God? Word of God, I mean this, before it is written, by the way, the word of God is not just what you see, it's written. Before it was written, it was said. But what enabled them, God was not, was not anywhere when he said, Oh, you, Peter, write this, write it. No, no, no. There's something that was in Peter that made him to write. The Holy Spirit. Isn't it? Yeah. Do you know another name for the Holy Spirit? The Spirit of Christ. Isaiah 40, verse 19. When you see John saying that the word is spirit and life, look at this. Isaiah 40, verse 19. So when we say the apostles were inspired by the Holy Spirit and the Lord, Whatever they wrote is this what we, the writings. This is not the word of God. This is what they put down. But the word of God itself, what is it? That's what I'm emphasizing. It says uh -huh. in 40 verse 13, uh -huh. uh, who hath directed the spirit of the Lord? Who can direct the spirit of God? Or mm -hmm. being his counselor hath who can be taught a counselor? him. Mm -hmm. Hath taught him. Has taught him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the same verse, taken from Romans chapter 11 verse 34. Listen to this. Romans 11, 34. The same, same. But now Paul is accurate. He removes the word mind. Who can direct the mind of God in Isaiah? He puts something else. Now read by the Yeah, it says in verse 34, uh -huh. chapter 11, uh -huh. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, uh -huh. or who hath been his counselor? No, no, no. Wait. Isaiah said? Isaiah said spirit. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was interchanging. Isaiah, Isaiah said spirit, spirit. but... Paul says, Paul says mind. the mind. So, what is in the mind of God? The words of God, isn't it? So, whatever I say, the Bible says, guide your heart with all diligence. So, when I speak, it shows what is in my mind, isn't it? My thoughts, isn't it? Okay? So, God, when we say in English, let us hear your mind. Are you going to remove your mind with it? Or the words you will speak, okay? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now, I want to, by the way, what I'm doing, I'm trying to do is to exhort the Bible. The Bible is not just the Bible the way you think. Let us go to the quotations now. Listen to this. It's not just the, the writing you think. That's why you neglect it study. It's something above that God has exalted it. What is it that God has exalted it? We need to understand. Quotations. Now, look at this. The life of Christ that gives life to the world is in his word. Amen? Amen. The life of Jesus that gives life to the world 
is in this. Yes, so the word of God is the life of Christ. The word of Christ or the word of God is the life of Christ. Is the word. Are you, are you listening? How powerful that is. Okay? Are you getting the concept? Yes. We are just quoting. Now continue, we continue. It was by his word that Jesus healed disease. Ah, by his word. See, the Bible says, Luke chapter 11 verse 20, Matthew chapter 12 verse 28. That is written by the finger of God. <clears throat> that is Matthew. Luke says, The Spirit of the Lord. Matthew says the Spirit of God. Luke, Luke says, says the, the finger of God. of God. Now, uh, that's just mentioning. Now, but it says here, he healed the disease by and they cast out demons by his word. Are you listening? We have said that the life of Christ that gives life to the word is in his word. John 6, 63 says that the word I speak to you are life and spirit. Spirit. Yeah. So you see how, how, how respectable and vulnerable his word is. Because this word is the life of Christ. The very life of Christ. Contained in human language and through the printing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's continue to say. By his word, he still the sea and raised the dead. And the people bore witness that his word was with power. Mm. He spoke the word of God as he had spoken through all the prophets and teachers of the Old Testament. The whole Bible. Now look at this. The whole Bible is a manifestation of Christ. And the Savior decided to fix the faith of his followers on the word. The whole Bible is the manifestation of Christ. So treat it with respect. When his visible presence should be withdrawn, is in the most holy place atoning, doing the last work of atonement. Okay? When his, when his visible presence is withdrawn, the word must be their source of power. So what did Christ left us as the source of power? The word. The word of God is the mind of God. Because when I say, let us hear your mind, we are hearing what you are going to speak, isn't it? Now, that word of God is the life of God. Amen? You see how powerful the word is? That's when you study the Bible, the inspiration says that the holy angels are by your side every morning. When you study the Bible, they shine the precious message into your mind. Now, when, that, when you open your mind to receive that word through the power of the Holy Spirit, they bring a transformation and a renewal. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like their master, they were to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4. 4. Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 8.3. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8.3. 8.3 8, 8, to 5. Uh-huh. Next. And look at this. No, 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 no. Preacher, you lied to me. Who is not faithful here? Is it Chris or you? <laughs> There's a quote that follows that. 677 is our pages. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let us go to John chapter 15. It's good for you to master what you present, okay? Let us go to John chapter 15. <laughs> but, uh, that's how we, we should be careful about the purpose. Okay? <laughs> when it does something contrary, we proclaim it. But then evangelism, page 7 of 5, paragraph 5 says, paragraph 2, that we are called to reveal the sin of the man of sin, the purpose. So those who say in the church don't preach about the purpose, the Roman Catholic priority, they are wrong. Amen? The inspiration says we should do that. But that, that should not be our gospel. We should mention it if they do wrong. Okay? Mm -hmm. But we should also endeavor to preach with zeal. The author says that in every topic. Amen? From the Bible. Now, what does it say? It says, John, 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 chapter 15, verse 1, verse 4, and verse 7. Okay? It says, I am the true one, uh -huh. and my father is the husband. Uh -huh. Verse 4, uh -huh. abide in me, mm. I in you. Uh -huh. So, Jesus is the vine. We are the branch. Okay? The father is the husband man. Is mm. the farmer. So, the farmer tends us both the branch and the vine. The vine. Okay? The branch obtains nourishment from the vine because the vine has roots and a stem. You remember vascular bundles? <laughs> vascular bundles? 
Yes. Those banners for, uh, for internet, eh? Vascular <laughs> banners, remember them? Yes. Zylem and Cambium. Yes. Mm, vessels, I remember. <laughs> they help in transportation of minerals, nutrients, water. Amen? Amen. Which they obtain from the peripheral. <laughs> peripheral what? Meristems, okay? Of the room. Okay? Now Jesus has all that. Which the branch now benefits from, okay? Are we together? Yes. If you cut the branch from the vine, it cannot exist. If we cannot obtain the nourishment from Christ, it cannot exist. And now, what is this minerals, nutrients, and the water from Christ? The word. Amen. Amen. The word. Amen. Amen. This is the nourishment. <laughs> now, how does Jesus live in us? These are the senses we are always not understanding. But then we cannot understand Christ our righteousness. We shall reach them and that is a very sweet topic. Victory over sin. Okay? But we must understand the basics. Now, uh, verse 4. How do we live in Jesus? Uh -huh. Okay, it continues to say. It says, As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, uh -huh. but except it abide in the vine, uh -huh. I've explained that. No yeah. more can he except he abide in me. Amen. So with, without Christ, we are nothing. Nothing, nothing. We are dust. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. We are dust. Eh? But with Jesus, we have everything. Everything. Amen. Our insufficiency, his sufficiency is our insufficiency. Our insufficiency is our insufficiency. Amen? Amen. <laughs> what, how do we call that parody? Parody. Now, verse 7. Let us go to verse 7. Verse 7 says, mm -hmm. If he abide in me, uh -huh. And my words abide in you. Now Jesus is saying, if you abide in me and I abide in you, but now he has come clear. How do he how does him how does he abide in us? By his word. So anyone who say by the letter of the many people have been preaching pantheism. You know what is pantheism? G. H. Kellogg, John Harvey Kellogg. Both the Trinity side and the Trinity side. Most of the people have been preaching pantheism. Number one. People say God can live in you. God can never live in you. He will destroy you. The reason why the devil destroy you, you cannot work on your own, is because they live in you. God has not to do that. Amen? Amen. God lives in you by his word. So anyone say, a being living in you is a lie. Is a lie. Jesus lives in you by his word. How did this thou? Volume 9 testimony for the churches. <laughs> How did this thou? That Christ as a distant being, the Father as distant being, the disciples as distant beings, yet they are the one. The Father, the Son, and the, and, the, and the disciples. How are they one? Because the same spirit is in the Father, is the same spirit in the Jesus, and is the same spirit in the disciples. Those are not my words. First John chapter 3, verse 24. So, and we have seen that the spirit and the word and the life, same thing. Do you know that Seventh-day Adventists, as a people, we have lost track of the message of Christ our righteousness because of the theology we are prescribed ourselves to. Now look at this, 1 John chapter 2, verse 24. 1 John chapter 2, verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us. Now who dwells in us? Christ. By the Spirit in us? By the Spirit. Uh, by the Spirit. Now, Which the Word is the Spirit and life. So, by His Word. Amen? Mm -hmm. Are we together? Mm -hmm. That is not fantastic. That is beautiful. Now, let us go to, to the next verse now. But there is a line in the Great Controversy, page 477. Say, 477. You remember that line? Yeah. It says that the, the Father, Father gave His Spirit without measure to His Son, and He will give to whosoever ask Him. Okay? Are we together? Are we together? That is the writing. That is what the Bible says and the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so that's scripture, amen? amen? And that is how we can overcome even erroneous doctrines like pantheism. Be aware, be, don't joke with the enemy. The papacy has interrupted a lot of things, so you need to be a student of the word. So we are talking about the word, that's why I'm reading from the Bible, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, question. Go back. Now, this reading in the word, what does the Lord says? Now it says, it says, uh, uh, that the Shimon of Shem says, oh, so I'm the one you can do. 
says, the words of Christ are spirit and life. You see that, the other one? Receiving them, you receive the light of the vine. Okay? So the word of Christ are spirit and life. In receiving them, you receive the light and vine. You will live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The life of Christ in you produces the same fruits as in him. Because it's the same life. The word is his life, so his life is in him. See so receiving the word, you receive his life. Then the fruit that now you will produce is the same fruit that he produces. What is that fruit? The fruit in the Galatians chapter 5. Meekness, love, patience, faith. You see? That's why Christ object lesson 69 says, Christ is waiting with eager desire to see the manifestation of his character in his people. Then he will come to claim them as his own. Until we produce the same character that is Jesus by abide, allowing the word of God to abide fully in us, until we reach a state whereby you cannot contradict and basically any line from the Bible. You can say, guys, that is from the Bible. You have quoted from the Bible. Oh, I'm weak. Christ is my strength. You go to your knees and say, oh, Father, be my strength. That is truth and it's a principle. I'm weak, but let me abide by your word, by your spirit, your grace that you give every day. Amen? Amen? Don't try to excuse yourself. What, what? You will not receive a true sanctification. Preacher, can you get something known as Great Controversy 6 or 8, paragraph 2? We finish. We finish with that. As he looks, we can go to the next. Uh, as, we, as he looks, eh? So, unatupa uko? Uko Ah, wait, wait, bus. Uh, this thing is as we finish. Enable me, enable me. <laughs> You're blocked. Eh? Yes? Okay, let's go to the next. There's something I'm looking for. What's something I'm looking for? Okay, I'm going to say something. Let's go to verse 6 or 8, paragraph 2. As the storm approaches, as the storm approaches, now listen to this. The storm is what I'll be preaching here. The Sunday no crisis. It's the storm. By the way, volume 7, write this down. Bible commentary, page 976. Mm. Go and read the entire chapter. Uh, the, entire, the entire page. It says, The last test to be brought to God's people in the last days is the enforcement of the image of the fish. Okay? So those who say those, 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 things, those things don't exist, you are speaking against the inspired word. Amen? 7 BC. Volume 7. Bible commentary. BC 976. The entire page. You will see. Okay? Are we together? Now, as the song approaches an class, my brother, Okay, who have a professed faith in the third angel's message, but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth. You see? So we have people here who understand health message, clear to second coming, country living, medical missionary, dress and reform, how family life, courtship, etc. Now by the way, she could have come up principles. Like in the Niao, it was not by the Holy Spirit, but by their father sanctification. For the word of God to sanctify you, it must be through the Holy Spirit that God has given to every one of us. Amen? Are we together? The former reign is when you get baptized. The Holy Spirit you, you are given when you get baptized to help you, to be our helper, to take you to all truth and the love of truth in your former reign. Then in Amanisha doctrine, in Amanisha, the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Doctrine in the word, they are intertwined. Okay? It's the same thing, okay? So, what are baptism? Believe and be baptized so that you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. So, when you receive that Holy Ghost, another one will be in your Jabal and Fuata, you know, former reign. Former reign in Akufanya, when you have a character of Christ, it makes you to have the character of Christ with the time now. When you say, Oh, I used to speak this, now Jesus has seasoned my speech with grace, I will be speaking this. Not by my own might, by the Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So, you live by a curse, says the Lord, from every word that proceeded from his mouth. Amen? Amen. Every, every decision you want to make in life, you don't do it boldly because of your beautiness, handsomeness, your intelligence, your height, etc., your abilities, your attachment and network in the market. Eh? But you do as a curse, says the Lord. Every mouth that proceeded from his mouth is wise. 
Then she told them, Amen. 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 I love the word. Do you love the word? Yes. Yeah? Now, when you benefit from the work of the former rain, during the Sunday law, the mark of the beast, the image of the beast crisis, God will give us the last measure. Without measure, the Holy Spirit in huge, bountiful measure for us to finish the work. Which work? The loudly cry. The loudly cry message. Amen? Amen. To finish the work, and Jesus will finish this work into shortness of righteousness. Amen? Amen. So we must be sanctified in obedience to the truth. Don't No, to surrender to Jesus means this. I've heard many ministers preaching a lot about surrendering to Jesus. It's just a simple thing. Look at this. What is surrendering to Jesus? This is your will, God's will. God is, God's will is in His Word. And the spirit of prophecy is not an addition to that word, no. It's a magnifying lens of the word. So if you want to see those letters, you, do, you take the magnifying lens, you look at them. Well, okay? The spirit of prophecy, okay? So it's one thing. So the word of God, amen? amen. The God's will, okay? Yeah. His will is in his word. He cannot save you in any other thing unless you believe in his word, amen? amen. Okay? Amen. Now, God's will. Your will, what is your will? The stomach needs, the hormones are disturbing. My mind wants to think this way. My children are this. You see, you see, that's your way. Now, when you surrender, I used to do this. The message is sweet. Jesus loves me. He's my power. He wants to reclaim me. He wants to restore me, revive me, and renew me. Now, I surrender my will. Strike it with water. I follow Jesus' will. Because it's not my, my own power or might, but the word, not by power or might. God is not defining to Himself. He's telling Zaduba, not by your might or your power, but by my spirit. Because the spirit is the power of God, amen? Amen. And the life of God, amen? amen. Nothing contradictory, my brother. And now the Bible, the way it says, you will understand a lot of things, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, now when you follow that will of God, then you take Jesus, you put on Christ. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. Now Christ becomes your mind. He thinks, he, for, he will give you grace and strength for you to do that which is pleasing. Day by day. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. You grow step in step in glory until now you, be, you, 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 you reach a stature whereby you, you cannot be shaken or moved. How do we call that? Sealing. What is sealing? But another 200 page 2, paragraph 2. Sealing into truth so that you cannot be moved both intellectually and spiritually. Knowledge, practicality. Amen? Amen. You see. The precious truth, the third angel's message in Verity. Amen? Amen? Let me finish there. Amen? Amen. Let us start with Psalm 500. Even as we say.